Hi everyone, and welcome to another video where I'm going to be tackling a myth about the T-34 tank. Now, you know that I've done a video with military history visualized about myths of the, on the T-34, uh, but, you know, the T-34 is a very popular tank, and there's definitely no shortage of myths to go around. So one of the most persistent myths about the T-34 is that these tanks were so unreliable that they had to carry spare transmissions with them into battle on their engine deck. Uh, unlike some myths about the T-34 or other common myths of World War II, we actually know where this myth comes from. There was a tank photographed in Lvov in June of 1941 by some German soldiers, uh, and this tank kind of, it sat, it sat on a street, right on top of a streetcar track, so it really couldn't be avoided, uh, and it was a very popular landmark, and a number of soldiers took photographs of it. And as these uh, photographs surfaced in private collections after the war, historians took a look at them, and since in the West there wasn't really that much information available on the T-34, they made the conclusion that, you know, the T-34 must have been unre unreliable because look at this tank, it's got a transmission on its back. So let's think a little bit about this claim. Uh, a T-34 transmission, I can show it to you here, compared to the rest of the tank, it's it's not small. Uh, it's a very large component, and it requires a crane, an engineering crane, to replace. It requires two technicians working uh, for a total of about 24 hours or you know, 12 hours a piece. And you can maybe get away with spending less time depending on what actual component of the transmission you're replacing or servicing. But this is definitely a very involved and difficult operation. You're not going to be doing this in the middle of a battle. It's not something simple as replacing a torn track. So when reading about the Smith, there's also another thing that you should take into account. Uh, if this was a matter of policy, or at the very least a common occurrence in the field, then there should probably be pictures of other tanks like this. Um, and this is where I unfortunately don't have the resources to answer this question, but I went to someone who does. Uh, historian Francis Pullum, author of, among other books, T-34 Shock, the Soviet legend in pictures, has a collection of these private photographs taken by amateur German photographers um, on the Eastern Front, in both in the summer of 1941 and, and of course, in subsequent years. Uh, and uh, Pullum has about a thousand photos of the T-34 alone. Uh, he shared some photographs of this actual tank that have not, to my knowledge, been published before. However, Pullum does not have, even in his extensive collection, any other photographs of any T-34 tank with a transmission strapped to its back, nor is he aware of any of them. So we can conclusively say that this was not a common phenomenon. This tank might actually be the only one. Uh, of course, it's, it's possible that other photographs might surface, but at the very least we can conclude that this is not something that happened very commonly. So we must ask ourselves, why does this tank even have the transmission on its back? Well, Pullum can help me answer that question as well. Uh, he has other photographs from that general area and from other places where T-34 tanks carried all sorts of equipment on, on their engine decks. And this is because the Red Army in 1941 both had a critical shortage of spare parts and a critical shortage of motor vehicles. And so when you're staging an evacuation of, uh, let's say, a repair facility, you're going to be bringing everything you can with you, even if that means putting some boxes on the back of a tank. And this is something that... Uh, specifically the phenomenon, phenomenon of tanks being used to carry cargo. This is something that we're going to see again in 1944 um, as Soviet tanks begin these long, uh, long armored thrusts, but of course going in the other direction. Another interesting thing to note is that spare parts, particularly spare parts for the T-34 tank, were worth their weight in gold in the summer of 1941. So by June 1st, 1941, uh, factory number 183, which was the primary factory that uh, produced T-34 tanks, they had actually delivered only a quarter of the spare parts they promised to deliver that year. And uh, Stalingrad Tractor Factory, the backup factory for T-34s had delivered 10% of what they promised. So, of course, you would want to, if you have some spare parts lying around and you're retreating, you would definitely want to grab as many of them as possible on your way out. So we've looked at German photographs, but what about Soviet sources? Surely, if such a policy existed somewhere in uh, the Red Army, there would be documents left confirming it. And this is where I can actually help. 
uh, there is a document that I have in my collection that confirms that a spare parts were included with a T-34 tank to fix a uh, critical weak link in its reliability. Now, I'm not talking about the transmission, I'm talking about the tracks. A T-34 tank in 1941 could be expected to drive 3,000 kilometers. However, the tracks were only good for 1,500 kilometers. And so Factory 183, like I said, the primary producer of T-34 tanks, pledged to include a second complete set of tracks with every T-34 tank they shipped until this problem could be corrected. Even though the document is honest about including these spare tracks in order to match the T-34's reliability requirement, there's absolutely no mention in this or any other document that I've come across about spare transmissions. So as you can see, neither Soviet nor German sources indicate that this was actually uh, either an accepted policy or a common phenomenon that soldiers kind of did on their own. Uh, the, since T-34 spare parts in the summer of 1941 were quite hard to come by, this was merely valuable equipment that had to be recovered. And whether it was carried on the back of a T-34 or a tractor or a truck, it didn't matter. You just needed to get it out of there at any cost. 